Hi guys, this is Karina Borgia LaCroix, the title girl and owner of American Real Title. Going live again, you know, every day I've been, I have a, a series of, of topics that I want to talk about that are concerning to our clients and our friends out here after Hurricane Ian. Um, and that always changes because today I wanted to talk about mortgage forbearance agreements and mortgage deferral agreements and their differences. But Yesterday, I had a call from a, an agent that I've done closings with uh, from Cape Coral who had a client that is a tenant renting a property in Cape Coral where the roof caved in. Um, and the tenant who was living there has an 11-year-old son. They left the home and stayed with a friend. And when she contacted the landlord, the landlord stated to her that she wasn't going to give her her deposit back. The tenant was asking for the deposit back so that she could have something to be able to put down on her new rental if she found one. Well, um, so the landlord said that they were under contract and that she wasn't going to let her out of her contract and that uh, she was effectively going to be keeping her deposit and she had to live in the property no matter what because she was under contract. Um, so this is a huge issue because there are tenant rights out there. Um, and I think that a lot of tenants go by the word of what the landlord says and are afraid of doing anything other than. This particular tenant went back to the home and is staying in the home with the roof caved in with her 11 year old son because this landlord basically said, you're gonna be in default of your contract if you leave. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, tenant rights, okay? Um, and if you have any questions, please, like I always say, you can call me. Um, I just wanna make sure that uh, people understand that there is help out there. Under the comments here or in, in the preview of this video, I've put an 800 number that you can call for emergency rental assistance. Um, they can guide you through situations like this when you don't have an attorney. But I wanted to talk about the warranty of habitability, okay? And a little bit about a Florida statute, if if you're not familiar with it, you could do a search online for this. Uh, the Florida Statute 83.51, so 83.51, it's titled Landlord's Obligation to Maintain the Premises. So um, I what I wanted to talk about are a couple of different things. Um, in Florida, tenants have the implied warranty of habitability. In the simple terms of that, it means that the rental units have to be maintained and have to be in livable conditions. Um, so if you have a uh, rental property that you are renting um, and the roof caves in, you would assume that uh, this property is not habitable. It is not in living condition. So um, it is the right to habitability, I'm sorry, um, in the dwelling is implicit, okay, in any agreement, whether written or not written, okay? So there are some people also that say, well, I was only staying here. Um, we don't have a, a, an agreement or maybe we're month to month regardless. If you are renting a property and you're paying rent, you have the warranty of habitability, period, okay? There's no if, buts, and maybes about this. And and I know that my um my demeanor right now is not the usual Karina happy face uh, because I'm really bothered by what, what I'm seeing out there. And I want to be here to help people and help my my community and my clients. So um, the, the, the right to a livable dwelling and the habitable dwelling is non-negotiable, okay? It's non-negotiable. Even if your landlord has written in some agreement something about, you know, how they're not going to maintain this, that, or the other, um, it, it is an essential tenant's right, okay? Um, and they can't, they can't remove that from an agreement, even if they have a custom agreement. It is a state law that they have to provide a habitable unit. Um, so what does implied warranty of habitability include? Any Florida implied habitability includes, but are not limited to the following, okay? The right to peaceful living. I know that you guys understand this one. Um, I talk about this a lot with my clients. Uh, the rental unit must be habitable. 
and equipped with functioning utilities, all right? Now, in a situation where there is a hurricane and we as a whole do not have water, running water or electric, and it is not caused by a misrepair or uh, something that hasn't been fixed by the landlord, that's a different thing. But let's assume everyone else has utilities and they have uh, refused to fix some uh, electrical panel and now you have no electric, you know, that's a habitability issue. The building must be structurally safe, okay? That's where this comes in for my client that called with the roof. The roof having caved in does not provide a safe environment for the tenant, okay? Period. It doesn't. Um, the landlord must maintain the property and overall. And now, if, and I'm going to be reading this from um, an actual excerpt in a case law, um, where it says, what can I do if my landlord breaches the implied warranty of habitability? If your landlord fails to keep your rental unit livable by ignoring maintenance requests, cutting off utilities, or anything otherwise. Now, in the case of a hurricane, it may not have been an issue where they are not providing habitable uh, uh, rental units. The hurricane may have caused the damage that is outside of the landlord's uh, doing, okay? In a situation like that, if your roof were to cave in and you're a tenant, um, your landlord most likely will have to tell you to leave that property. Now, them telling you to stay, which was the problem I was seeing with my client, them telling you to stay and telling you that they can't let you out of the contract is them pretty much breaking the law. So. You may be in a situation like a normal situation, something small, you could you could uh, refuse to pay the rent in order to be able to uh, use that money for repair. But in a situation like a hurricane and where something is, uh, you know, in disrepair or something that probably wouldn't be covered by what your rental uh, amount is, um, as a landlord, basically we'll be violating the law if, and you are no longer um, bound to your lease agreement and you may move out without notice, okay? Um, and you don't, you won't be responsible for future rent payments. And that's where that statute comes in, the 83.51. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is I know a lot of tenants out there that have been renting a property that has been damaged. And I am hearing a lot of landlords telling these tenants that they are not going to let them out of those contracts, okay? Again, this was not something that was caused by a landlord and it was not the landlord's uh, wanting to happen. So it, it isn't something that was caused by them, okay? So we see that, but a, a a landlord that is telling a tenant that they are not going to let them out of their contract because a roof caved in um, and now this home is uninhabitable is breaking the law, period. So I just wanted to make that clear. If any of my clients out there, any of my friends out there, or you know anyone out there going through any of these issues with tenants or, or landlords. I mean, it goes both ways. There are tenants that don't want to leave the properties, okay, which is another huge issue. Um, I And we understand tenants don't have places to go, but as a landlord, as well as I, as I was just talking on the tenant side, but as a landlord, you can't allow your tenant to stay in an uninhabitable property. So that's an issue too that, um, that we can discuss. If you your family, your friends, any of my friends, any of my clients are going through any of these, any of my real estate agent friends that are managing properties and are trying to figure out what to do at this moment, uh, please give me a call. I'm happy to talk to you and talk you through what the law says and, and how to go about this. Um, again, I'm not saying uh, that uh, the tenant has all the rights or the landlord has all the rights. All I'm talking about right now was that specific example that I mentioned earlier where my client uh, was told by the landlord that they were not going to let them out of the contract. They still expected the rent and was not going to give their deposit back and expected them to be in the property because they were under 
contract after the roof caved in. It is illegal for a landlord to do that. And I just want to make that clear. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to call me. My telephone number at the office is 239-768-0144, extension 11. I put the 800 number for the emergency rental assistance in the, in the little blurb here about the video. If you have any other questions, PM me, call me, email me. Um, I'm here to assist. This is what I'm spending most of my days doing right now because as you can imagine, there aren't a lot of closings taking place um so i'm spending my time helping people that are confused about what they can and can't do as far as everything whether it's contracts uh people under uh, purchase and sales contracts or people under rental agreements and things like that and if i can't help you i will certainly find someone that can my name is karina borgia lacroix i know you guys all know me as a title girl i am the owner of american real title and i'm here to serve you i hope everyone is well and that everyone has a fabulous weekend if you have any other topics that you want me to discuss i will be happy to do so next week i'm going to be talking about mortgage deferrals and mortgage forbearance agreements and their differences so stay tuned for that if you have anything you want me to discuss feel free um, to pm me and let me know and i will do a video on that and maybe bring you along on it all right have a good weekend i hope everyone is safe uh if you need any help i'll be out um uh, giving supplies i i did want to say and i'm gonna bring it up next week but um Gradum, uh, they're located here in Fort Myers. Their owner, Alex, um, is a Red Sox uh, baseball player. And Gradum is a baseball uh, training facility. Uh, they are collecting a lot of donations from the East Coast and bringing them here. And I have paired them up with uh, some organizations where they're going to be helping people in our area. If you have any donations to give and you need um, a place that, or, or a safe place to give your donations or, um, you know, a place that's been verified, ask me. I have a long list of, of places and organizations that I've been working with um, so uh, we can help with that. I'll be working on that this weekend. Again, PM me, call me, anything you need, emergency. You guys know where to reach me. Um, thanks again, and I will see you all next week. Have a good one. Bye.